All right, welcome back to the channel, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Black Canvas Grappling, the newest save here on the channel. And what is this? Well, it is, this was an offline save that I'm going to bring to YouTube. I'm going to reboot it and bring it to YouTube. Um, so what happened was I originally wanted to, in my free time, play from 2016 to 2020 with every company in the Seaverse, but I didn't want to do it in 2016. I wanted to do it in 2020, and because there wasn't one, um, import, one port of 2016 that was perfect, I got frustrated on the first company, and I decided instead of doing from 2016 to 2020, let's do from 2020 to 2024. And I spun a wheel, and the first company was Black Canvas Grappling. And I made it all the way to October until, like, fucking six of my top stars were injured, and I'm like, this blows. So I wanted to reboot it, and I'm like, you know what? I might as well bring it to YouTube. So, um... Yeah, here we are. So I have some ideas already. I have a map, a, a, a general map for what I'm going to do at the start of the save. But so what has happened is I've changed the logo in this timeline. I'm not retconning anything per se, but instead of changing their logo to the one that is default... This one, I, I'm not a huge fan of this one. It's not a bad logo. I just, I'm not a huge fan of it. I have this this number here, and so one thing that I think would be fun to do is in. So I don't know if this will, if I'll turn this into a YouTube thing where I do a four year long run with every company in the Seaverse. Maybe I'll just keep doing Black Canvas Grappling. Maybe I'll just go six years. I don't know. I don't know how long this will last. But um, what I thought would be fun is if I do a four-year run with every company, that it would be um, a fun thing to do to change the head booker I play as every time. And in this timeline, we are going to be Mabuchi Furusawa. So Furusawa, the head cannon I have is Furusawa comes in following Golden Canvas Grappling's closure. And he is immediately, almost immediately take over, takes over booking from Masayuki Shiga, who is the canon booker at this time. He became the head booker in 2019, but was replaced by Mabuchi Furusawa by the owner, Yoshifusa Maeda. And he was replaced so Furusawa could... Add a little more flavor to BCG, make them a little more mainstream, a little more digestible without completely alienating their original fan base. So what that means is that over the course, my goal for 2020, my goal for the year of 2020 is to have almost, if not everybody, in a stable. I want to add a good amount of stables. I want it to be like Stardom, where there's very few people not in stables. And, um, instead of just going, uh, I thought about just straight up, not retconning per se, but adding everybody into a stable off the gate, but I think it would be more fun if I had storylines go through the company that created all the stables that you're going to see. Um, so in addition to adding a bunch of new stables, we will also, I have also given Almost all the teams. I couldn't think of anything for these two yet. I, you know what? That's a lie. That's a complete lie. Um, I do have a team name in mind, but I'm waiting. I have I have a plan for them in, involving the aforementioned stables that are going to come in, and I don't want to change their name until the stable gets put through, because it, it it'll make it'll make sense when it happens. Okay, it'll make sense when it happens. Um, but yeah. So in in terms of adding more flavor to the BCG. All the teams have been given names, so Raw Power is the duo of Ichiro and Koyo, two kind of young boys, um, they're actually not young lions anymore, or at least Ichiro isn't, no, they're not young lions anymore, so they've, they've pretty much just graduated from the young lion phase, uh, 
the silent killers, which is Kandomaru Kamasaka and Kiyotaka, the bald, boring guys, as I like to call them, because they do not do much for me. They are a team. That's all they are. The spine breakers are the team of Yoku Ka- Yoko Kawa and Sojuro Sen. Uh, another duo where I don't really have much use for them as singles, so they're a team. Team Taku, which, um, you know, father and son duo. The American Cobras, Marvel Malloy, and Storm Spillane, two gaijin that everybody loves, at least I've seen. Uh, the Dependables, I've given them this name because this guy is known as Mr. Dependable. They are not good for much except for being solid mid-card acts, I guess. And then the Wild Ones, which are another two gaijin, Animal Harker and Big Bruiser Finley. Uh, they are individuals. I think they should be a unit. I think everyone but Team Taku should be a unit. Um, but yeah, those are our teams. So, uh, what else, what else is going to be including stables, team names? Um, Maeda has specifically asked Furusawa to include more tournaments throughout the year. Right now, we only have the Soul Survivor Tournament and the Grand Prix. The Soul Survivor not even being a tournament, it is a four-way elimination match, but... The way I, Furusawa, am going to book it is that the Soul Survivor will be a single elimination tournament where the finals will be a four-way elimination match. So all we have right now is the Soul Survivor and the Grand Prix. So that's, before this year, only one tournament, now turned to two. And I'm thinking, I already have a guaranteed tournament we're going to do. February is going to, instead of be the Tag Mania Tour, it will be the Tag Mania Tournament, which will also be a round robin like the Grand Prix. And I'm thinking of another tournament. I'm, in the save I did, I did one for the Strength Rush, but I, I don't know. Because it's still a big gap from Soul Survivor to Strength Rush with no tournament, but... Maybe we'll do a tournament during the Lion's Roar. That's where our fourth tournament will be. But the goal is four tournaments, and we might add another one next year if if, um, if I want to. Because, at least for me, I don't know about you guys, when there isn't a tournament, the tour shows are just kind of like autopilot booking. So I like to have a lot of tournaments just because it helps me with my booking. Um... He w- we will also be adding slightly more gimmicks in terms of, like, we're not going to come out and, and have fucking, you know, The Miz cut a promo or anything. But each person, we're going to try to give more of a defined character, and we're also going to hire people that have more defined characters instead of just a bunch of, you know, stat watching, as I like to call it, where you just look at, oh, this guy's good, let's hire him. This guy's good, let's hire him. You know... I, I, we're going to try to add more personality to our wrestlers. And this one, not guaranteed. Like, stables are guaranteed to come. Tournaments are guaranteed to come. We might add another title. Because playing BCG, there's a big roster and three titles to go for. And one of them is, like, the rookie's title, as I like to book it. Because that's, it, that's what it is. Um... It's, it's a belt to groom the next contender. So you don't have to turn the Challenger Series. You can turn it into a belt, just a mid-card belt. But I don't, and I don't like to change gimmicks of belts. So um, if I add another title, it will kind of be like the New Japan Intercontinent. Or that's not even a title anymore. The Global Title, that's what it is. Just like a, a solid secondary world title. In addition to the Challenger Series. Or we might just turn the Challenger Series into a just a generic mid-card title. Um, so yeah, um, let's run down the full roster. I'll give my quick thoughts because this is a company so um, different. Not different. Different's the wrong word. But um, there's not really a lot of overlap between this company and any of the saves I've done dating back to 2016 I've done um I guess pride I did do I did do two streams of pride but that was before I even really knew how to book Japan (laughs) I I like I was watching new Japan pay-per-views 
and stardom pay-per-views at the time, but I never really grasped the concept of tour shows. This is going to be like, because other than that, I've only really done America or um, Puerto Rico. So let, I'm just going to quickly run down the roster. We have Animal Harker, who also works for NYCW. He's pretty good, but uh, his partner, Big Bruiser Finley, is really going to be the one I kind of push in this save. I want Finley to kind of be like our top gaijin. Um, love him. He's very good. I signed him in SWF before I even played BCG. I just happened to remember him from very old Ma saves in 2013 where I really enjoyed him, and I'm like, people don't book him enough. Let me sign him, and now he's here in BCG too. So, yeah, I'm going to try to turn Finley into our top gaijin. Um, Blastikoma is a guy who, he, he he's still in his bio. It says he's, like, one of the top stars in BCG, but when they first opened, he was, like, one of their first world champions, um... But he hasn't done much since. He's actually won the Challenger Series after his second world title. After his second. After his world title reign, he won the Challenger Series again. Which I kind of see that as like a falling down the card kind of thing. Um, I And I, I might want to try to like re-put him into the main event scene. But again, his skills just kind of aren't there for BCG. And I know I just went on a thing about giving every person. It's not just about stat watching. You still have to stat watch when you're doing BCG. It's just for headcanon, we're going to give them more characters. Um, but Blast has kind of fallen down the card because he's been uh, passed up by the newer graduates like Booner Kukantori, who is my favorite person in this promotion. I love him, and he's amazing. So he will be in the main event scene. Dynamite is Tori's old tag team partner, and he hasn't really done much since they broken up. He's all right. He's a solid mid-card hand. So he's one of these guys where the, he might get pushed. Not pushed, pushed, but like he might become upper mid-card kind of status just if things happen to work out that way. There's a couple of guys that are like that where like I have no feelings one way or another towards them. So if they get pushed, it's just by virtue of either being in the right stable at the right time, me needing a kind of a feud for someone and they just kind of get a good rub from one of those um another one of our top star actually our top star i will say is funakoshi he is very good however i remember in my save him kind of disappointing me when he was the world champion so i get the feeling because i've only really done that one save but i get the feeling that funakoshi is one of these guys where it's like he can either be a god for you or he will be kind of hit or miss and he was hit or miss last time so i i it will see how he turns out in this save giant brody is one of my favorites despite not being too great he will probably get pushed better than he is um yeah genji kasaka ki mm. Genji Kisaka is a young lion who I just remembered I had in a team that I want to bring back because I didn't realize um, they weren't a team in default. I didn't realize I made them a team. Um, yeah, he's a young boy right now, so not much to talk about him. He might turn out good. He's not that good right now. Uh, our announcer referee Ichiro I was just talking about he just graduated he's another one of these guys just like dynamite where um I have no strong feelings one way or another so if he gets a push he might if the cards play correctly for is that that's I'm saying that wrong um Iki Hosaka he's brand new so However, I don't really like his render. This is this is how I operate, guys, by the way. I don't really like his render, so the only way he'll get pushed is if he's really good and if things happen to play out well for him. Um, Injero, in a G Dude, I... <laughs> I'm one of those guys that needs to hear the name pronounced for me to be able to pronounce it correctly. Um, Inijiro Yoshizawa. 
I think that's right. That sounds right to me. Um, he is one half of our tag champs. I believe probably the best tag team BCG has, and I love both of them. I love Inajero a little more than I love, um, uh, fucking, fuck, what's his name? Fuck me. Uh, Mira. But, yeah, they're gonna stay a team. Unless one of them gets, like, injured. Please don't. Um, but, yeah. I talked about both of these guys, Kandamaro and Kiyotaka. They are... Cards will really have to play... That is not... That's not the right saying. Um... Things will have to play out impeccably perfectly for either of these two to get any form of a push. So, like, I like they're good. He's not even that good. He's good, but, like, eh. Uh, Koyo, he's, you know, one half of raw power. I, I actually, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to go out of my way to push them, but if they get pop... I'll run with them. Like, I, I kind of really like this duo. Um, obviously, Mabuchi Furusawa. Um, he is fucking great. He's amazing. And he can cut a promo. So, that's why we went with him for the for the booker position. I like to call him Showtime. I, you know, just to give him a little more... Just to make him a little more like Okada. Just give him a nice nickname that people refer to him as. Um... Let me change that. Oh, no. Showtime of Mabuchi Furusawa. Love this guy. Um, he's incredible. Um, 2020, if things go according to the loose plan I have, isn't going to be too successful for him, per se. But, but, he will stay at the top of our company for the entirety of this run, since we are playing as him. Uh, Marvel Malloy, one half of the, the American Cobras. They are unimportant right now. These two guys, Marvel and Storm, I am going to go out of my way to push. They, I love them. They are very good. And being in BCG, they will get really good really fast. Um, Shiga, former head booker, just retired. And as a little bit to help the head cannon, not to help the head cannon. I guess it is to help the head cannon. It is technically head cannon. Uh, can I say headcanon one more fucking time? Um, to help the narrative that we have been... That I have created in terms of Furusawa becoming the head booker. I have given him a simmering tension with me. Just to play into it. I th I thought that'd be a fun thing to do. Um, but yeah, he's a really good road agent. So I don't want him to leave. Same thing with Murukami. Very good road agent. Now Zane Goto. I have a lot to say about Mr. Goto. Um, he is our current Challenger Series champion, and he is fucking horrible. He is terrible right now, and the reason he is terrible is not because his psychology is 46, although that doesn't help. His selling is 48, although that doesn't help. The real kicker is this fucking stamina. Now, I can't remember the exact number it was, but because his stamina is 46, he can fucking barely even work normal length matches he gets blown up so fast that so what happened in my original run through was that he went so in canon he's won the challenger series in december and i fucking first show it's like holy shit this guy can't work 12 minutes holy fuck i'm going to get this belt off him asap but i didn't want to destroy the the um the prestige of the belt so i gave him a shorter but decent run with it and then by the time it was ready for him to drop the belt this motherfucker had stamina i'm like what the fuck so what i'm going to do in this save is expect mr goto to lose this belt very quickly because i do not have the patience for this man fucking anymore <laughs> um <clears throat> yoko kawa one half of the spine breakers uh i'm not fond of him He's 40 years old, so expect him to take a lot of losses. Uh, Nobuyuki Kubo uh, just graduated. I don't hate his render. He's very bad, so if he turns out decent, he might become an upper mid carter for us. Um, Noritoshi Mira, the other half of our current tag champs, he is very good. 
He is very good. He will get even better. Um, yeah, not much else to say that I didn't say with Ichiro. Not Ichiro. That I didn't say with Njiro. Um, right below Mr. Mira is Razan Okamoto, who the company... Not the company. The, the game clearly seems to think that he is our top guy. And he is the best guy that we have. But unfortunately for Mr. Okamoto, I just cannot seem to properly use him to turn him into that top star. As my undying love for Boon Raku Kintori has damaged any potential he has of becoming the top star. So, Okamoto, I believe he actually dropped down to the star. He's a major star right now. He dropped down to star and my plan is to not make that happen again. So, if that happens, Mr. Okamoto, I'm sorry, I appreciate you, but you always will turn out to be so fucking good, too. Oh, maybe I should completely flip what I have planned on its head. Oh, no. Uh, referee, Roku Satomura is a complete prick. He thinks he's better than he is, and he constantly complains about losing, even when it's to people that are slightly above him. So, this guy can suck my dick and nuts one by one uh, before he will eventually quit the company. Um, Rokuman Matsushita is a guy who I like a lot, but he also suffers from pretty low stamina. It's nowhere near as bad as Mr. Goto. However, I tried to push Matsushita and... I then found out that, so, let's take a look at the product real quick. So, when you're working pay-per-views, the fans expect any match involving a major star or a star. This is what this means, guys. Matches less than 20 minutes will not be able to, um, no, that is the wrong, this one, no, nope. okay, where is it? Son of a fucking bitch. Uh, fuck me, where the fuck I think a smash cut right here would be really fun. There, right here. This one, fans expect important matches to be quite lengthy. I was right fucking there, and I just spent like a good 30 seconds looking for it. Um, what this means is that any match involving a major star or a star is an important match, and they expect the length to be at least 20 minutes. Rokuman Matsushita taps out right at 20 minutes. So, yeah, um, I tried to give him a proper solo run, did not work out, expect this guy to hit the tag team division if he wants any chance of actually succeeding, uh, Shiraku Omisaka is Okimasa, not Omisaka, Okimasa is decently good, he's not as old as I thought he was, he is in the exact same boat as Mr. Dynamite. Things worked out really well for Mr. Dynamite. Um, not really well. Things worked out pretty well for Mr. Dynamite in my um, in my in my original save. Um, maybe it will happen for Sharaku. Sharaku is it Shar Sharaku? Um, in this save, who knows? Uh, Shozo is a commentator. He's not that good, but he's good enough for now. Sofu Ozawa is old as dirt, and he can also barely wrestle long matches. Um, so expect him to be jobbing a lot, except he won't get mad at it like this piece of shit. So just by pure respect, he will probably have a job until he retires. So Juro Sen, you know, he's all right. Put him in the put him in the dynamite category. That I am gonna reference that a couple more times. So that's what we're gonna call it. Stormus Berlin, expect him to get pushed to the moon. Other half of the American Cobras with Marvel Malloy. Uh Suguru Emoto. Oh, I just realized this too. He also just graduated from Young Lion status, from Young Boy status. Um A stable with him and raw power could be kind of fun. I'm literally just coming up with that now. I don't know if that will come to fruition, but who knows? Uh, Suki is the future of this fucking company. He is incredible, 
and two months into my offline save, he hurt, he had a fucking herniated disc, and he was out for over a year, and I cried for a few minutes, so, please, for the love of God, oh God, please, 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 do not let that happen, I love this man, I want to make him the top guy. Takanori Doi, he is just about to graduate from Young Lion, I believe he will do it at some point this year, so, but he's still a Young Lion, so his skills are going to develop a little faster than Emoto and Raw Power, um, for those of you that actually, you know what, real quick, if they are a Young Lion, this is just how it works, their skills develop at a much faster rate than people that don't, and since we're a Japan Japanese company, fuck me. Since we're a Japanese company, Toshinobu Taku is the father of the other Taku, and he is 52. He can still kind of go, but because he's good and has his son here, he will have a job until he retires. Uh, Yori, Mr. Dependable and all, is Mr. Old is 47, so he might not have a job until he retires if he wants to take his fucking time, but, um, assuming he retires very soon, he'll, he'll, he'll retire here. Maeda, owner of the company, founder of the company, my boss, uh, Yoshi Nakataku, he, on the surface, so, on the surface, I, I originally would put him in the category of the guys like Big Bruiser Finley, um, Tanyu Toshusai, and Suki, guys that I want to fast track to the main event scene, but he's actually kind of, it just doesn't play out for him, if that makes any sense. It, you can only have, I'm talking about these categories, like I got a fucking spreadsheet with everyone's name in front of me, I don't, but... You can In that category where it's like, I want these guys in the main event scene ASAP, you can only have so many people in that position before you need to take priority. And poor Taku ends up getting put in that position. So I'm going to try to push him, but he will take... Um, Suki, Tanyu, and Finley will take priority over Mr... There he is, Mr. Taku. Yoshisanu Matsuzawa, very solid mid-carder. He's slightly more older, but he gets put in that Dynamite category up there with Dynamite, where it's more likely that if, if things if if the cards play for him, I'm gonna just keep saying that. There's nothing there's no there's no way around it. Um It's gonna be a lot easier for him to get an accidental push than a lot of those other guys, because he's pretty friggin' good. And the last guy on this roster. The other half of the team, I just fucking made the Red Dragons. Um, he's a young lion. Ogata, pretty good. Pretty good. Or, I don't know why I said pretty good. Like, he's fucking good. Um, he's, he's here. He might he might get good. Who knows? Who knows? Um, current champions, we kind of went through all them. Um, what else should we talk about? Uh, I guess the last thing I can kind of hit up is the f small changes I've made. I upgraded my production to minor license because I needed to. Uh, backstage, this is what I have going on. I turned it from a 70-something to an 87 by using these um, preferences. I don't know why. I don't know why, but for some reason when I turn off smoking... Tori uh, is no longer a positive influence. He hates people smoking that much. So, cool. Uh, and then the other change I made... These are very minor changes, by the way. The other change I made was I turned our dojo graduates to a fluid instead of every April. Because as as quickly as I can... I what The way I like to spend my money is I like to spend only after I get the profits, because then it's like, okay, I'm going to make about this much every month. I have, so I, ha I can afford to make this extra cost, or I can afford to up, you know. Um, once I see how much I'll be able to consistently make, I want to turn our dojo training up to a 70. I want to get it up there with pride. Because, dude, these rookies, they, they graduate and they're fucking terrible. They're the dirt worst. It's, oh, man. Um, and I actually do not want more than three graduates a year. Um, 
I actually find myself recently um, wanting smaller rosters because when I start to get too many people, then it's like, fuck, man, I signed this guy for nothing. And I, I don't like feeling that way. And you know what? This can be the logo for the... No, I don't want it to be the logo for the dojo. I don't like this logo. Sorry, whoever made that. Um, it's a good logo. I just don't like it. Um, I would much rather have only three graduates a year because if I make the running cost 70, then I'll, I'll, be, I'll sign all three of them because they'll be fucking good. Um, but yeah, so that's all the changes I've made. And so the way that this save is going to work, this episode's obviously going to be an outlier, but what, what we're going to do is instead of, uh, I thought about structuring these like the way Max Marvelous does his Japanese companies where he just runs the full tour. I feel like that's not, that probably won't work for me. Like I said, I'm very busy. So just sitting down, making sure my dogs are quiet making sure um, I have I have time to properly talk through each of these shows. And it would make the... You know, it's just... I don't think it would work. It would make these episodes way too long to get out. I'm, I want these to come out... Because right now, SWF gets uploaded once a week. I want these to come out at the same rate as SWF. Uh, but instead of Tuesdays, like, these could be Saturdays or something. I don't know. Um, but, you know, maybe every other week... But each show will just be, the way it'll structure itself is, um, the shows will only be the pay-per-views, okay? And the structure will go, I'll, I'll open the episode, talk about any major news that happened throughout the month, go through our show history, do a full recap, spend like 10-15 minutes doing a recap of what happened on the tour shows, what matches are happening tonight, and then I'll run the show, and that'll be the episode. So each episode will only come out to like 30 minutes instead of, um, you know, a full hour 30 of running a full tour and then two hours if it's, you know, uh, a tournament show. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you're all, all excited and I hope you all join me for our first ever BCG show, uh, BCT, BCT, BCG Heritage 2020 in episode one.